Hello, hello! Uh, today I decided to take a look at the Saipan, the UST7 uh, premium carrier. I made a commentary on this ship before, and back then I concluded that it's if you like carrier gameplay, I mean if, if you like US carrier gameplay with lesser squads, uh, then it can be quite fun to play, and it's fairly effective as well. Uh, I didn't think it matched up to Hiryu and ranked season 3, I think. Yeah, was it ranked? The last season was ranked season 3 or 4? I can't remember which one it was. But the last season, which had ranked 7 as the top, kind of showed that the Saipan was very... was competitive, very competitive. But among the top players, the Hiryu was still superior. In fact, uh, pretty much all the top carrier players in ranked uh, were playing the Hiryu and they were all having much better results than those that focused on playing the Saipan. Now, but in 0 0.5.11, uh, they have actually buffed the US carriers. They added 30% more ammo to all US carriers. Now, this might not be that big of a deal for the other lower tier carriers, since uh, if you went air superiority spec, you were already quite strong in that aspect. But for the Saipan's 2-2 spec, this is actually a fairly big deal because uh, well you with the two two setup meaning two torpedo bombers and two fighters you always had a really nice balance of air control and uh, torping power and now with the buff to this ammunition suddenly your air to air power is significantly stronger than it was before because you can basically constantly strafe and uh, of course when you run the midway captain as i do run on this you have four fighters in each squad which makes these strafes very very potent some guys i, I just said that please don't snipe bbs because i wish my bbs will be useful and then he said uh, he doesn't want to suicide because it's theory eight then i said well it's not that black and white for some reason battleship players always tend to look at the black and white either you have to yolo in or you have to sit at 20 kilometers but there's like this middle ground you can go for now of course I can, I'm going to demonstrate here the strafing power now with, well running a midway captain of course the strafe is already quite potent but more importantly I'm trying to show off just how much ammo you have. I strafed four bombers there, I'm going to, oops did I fucked it up, let's line that up again. I really want to get those torque bombers with a strafe. Nice, I got them just as they were lining up for a strafe, wrecked most of them. I'm strafing for the second time with that two squad and you see the two squad still has like still has plenty of ammo left even though I've strafed twice with it and the three squad has strafed once and it almost has full ammo still so for facing something like a strike setup like here is uh, just insanely one-sided in my opinion like you always had a significant advantage over strike specs I'm facing a strike ranger you always had a significant advantage over them uh, if you play the 2-2 the two, two setup, well, even if you play the 3-1 three, three, setup, but still, I hate the 3-1 setup because you do so little, you just rely on RNG bombers to be useful. Uh, but with this setup, against strikes, but, uh, strike setups, it's almost ridiculous how one-sided it is. In fact, I, the Ranger was all alone, I was tempted to go strike him, but then I decided, why on earth go strike him when I basically, I can just deny him all game long and I can still focus on the bigger threats. In this case, if you didn't notice, I started by focusing the Scharnhorst, which I consider a very strong ship. And then I see a Bismarck here that's bumping into the New Mexico. So once again, that's my second target. A very, very strong ship, especially as this is T6 to T8 matchmaking. So getting rid of the Bismarck early would be fantastic for my team. So that's why I focus him. His anti-air, of course, shoots down some planes, but I mean, you got quite a few of them to spare on the side pan. So getting a few hits in there, causing a flooding, maybe when it's, if my team sees this, they will spam him with HE and stuff because he'll have to repair the flooding and so forth. In fact, he's not repairing the flooding. I guess his repair was on cooldown. Well, even better then, he's gonna die to my flooding. Uh, of course, meanwhile, I'm doing something that you should always be doing on a carrier. Not only is both, both my fighters spread out, you can see I have one fighter on the left side covering me, and I have another fighter on the right side spotting their DDs. That's something for some reason carriers very rarely do, but it neutralizes the enemy DDs completely. I'm asking my Mutsuki to please stop trying to torp this guy and just shoot him, because I'm literally spotting him for him. Nice, he opened up with his guns now, and that guy got killed. But you can see, once again, he's trying to go in here for a strike. 
and my fighters are already patrolling. And of course, Saipan has incredibly fast fighter planes. Well, all the Saipan planes are very fast. It compensates by having very few of them. But with this ammunition buff, the Saipan has just gotten so, so strong, in my opinion. I mean, it was all, it was, in the past, it was very close between Saipan and Hiryu, which one actually took, uh, took the crown. Um, it, at, the, at, the, at lower tiers, uh, Saipans could have better success because the faster planes were more, or well, with lower skilled players, um, the Saipan was perhaps a bit more forgiving with the faster planes and such. But at higher tiers, the Hiryu had the edge. But now with this ammunition buff, I think it's going to be very, very close between the Hiryu and the Saipan, which one actually is better. It, it's, it might even flip it slightly to the advantage of the Saipan, simply because you can just strafe so many times before you run out of ammunition, which is obviously a huge, huge advantage. Of course, then it comes down to dodging strafes and such, which is something that happens very often when you're facing uh, good good CV players, and of course they tie up your fighters and such, so... I'm not certain if this is still enough to flip the advantage in the favor of the Saipan, but this is definitely a significant buff, especially in random battles where you don't, you were, when you, where you won't be facing that many like high tier CB players at all, and uh, just uh, and if you of course end up against pure strike specs like this ranger, then it's just ridiculous how completely outmatched he is. Like it's not even fair how completely outmatched he is. I see a strike coming through. I just engaged the fighters because I realize. Uh, I just want to spread out the storms. I see the Cleveland is already spreading them out now, so that's not an issue. Instead, I just see try to get as many kills. And this here, you can see just how powerful the strafes are already on the Saipan. Like <laughs> 14 planes, all his bombers dead. It's absurd how strong it is. And now that, now that you can literally, I think you can do like four full strafes or something. Three, four full strafes, which is insane. It's just so much power, air denial. And, um, well, this buff, while it must, was probably mostly aimed, I mean, the buff in ammunition was, of course, mostly aimed at buffing the poor Midway and the poor Essex, which are struggling extremely heavily in dealing with the Hakuryu and the Taiho, because the Hakuryu and Taiho are vastly superior. And even then, I well, I played, I played yesterday with my buddy, he played a Midway, he tried the 2-1-2 spec against an enemy Hakuryu, and... By the time the Haku he did manage to finally get the Hakuryu to run out of planes, but when that happened, the game was basically already over. It took the entire 20 minutes just to get rid of his planes. So, and he's, so it's kind of arguable of how big of a buff this ammunition increase really is for the higher tiers. It doesn't seem like it's that significant for the high tiers. Whereas the Saipan, on the other hand, will benef benefits greatly from this buff. I mean, you already countered strike setups really hard with the 2-2 spec, but now you do it even more brutally. So, of course, those that got the Saipan back in the day, they are going to be very happy with this change, because, well, an already strong ship got even stronger. Which is something you cannot say that happens often to US, US uh, ships. I mean, you, you, there are so few strong US premiums, so it's actually nice to see one of them get very, very strong for a change. Okay, these guys are struggling so hard in dealing with this trash can. Tash can, I'm sorry, shouldn't call it trash can. <laughs> I'm just gonna help him out since he seems to be struggling. There we go. And then I'll go help him out with the Sharnhorst. Meanwhile, I'm, of course, you can see my planes are just patrolling for his planes, just denying them. And that's another thing, you can have your planes so long in the air now, because you don't have to go and. Uh, refill the ammunition on them that often. You can just leave them in the air all the time and it's kind of ridiculous. I've got another 12 plane strafe. That poor guy. He's being so completely brutalized by this my, this my Saipan right now. Kind of feel sorry for him. Except not really, because when I'm playing some battleship and I get struck by CVs, I have a hard time feeling sorry for them. Got a flooding on the Sharnhorst. If our Nugget, my Nagata manages to uh, ram him now, he'll cause his own flooding and he'll actually manage to get the kill. Rather strafe actually than just... Honestly, strafing 
is already strong, but now it's even more useful. Basically, you, you don't even want to waste any time of um, just clicking. You want to be using Barrage all the time on the sidebar now, simply because you have so many you have so many opportunities to use it and you don't have to worry about running out of ammo the same way like usually if you miss one or two barrages you have to pull the planes back to refuel the 30 percent ammunition buff means that well that doesn't really happen does it you, you just have constant air control all the time now this could of course be different if uh, against an air superiority ranger or is it air superiority hear you i'm actually but um, either one of those, if they go air superiority, then of course they're not really much of a threat to anything besides you. I mean, the Hiryu can be somewhat of a threat, but even then I think the Saipan with this spec can deal fairly well with it. Whereas air superiority ranger will probably will e beat it easily, provided it's the same skill captain of course, but he won't have any actual striking power, which is of course the issue right now with the ranger in general. I mean, the ranger has always been a bit of a joke. I mean, either if you go strike setup, you have no... and you end up against something like me, you have you can't do shit. And if you go air superiority, well, yes, you gain the air superiority, but you can't do anything else, which is kind of, kind of sad. Oh, dropped a bit too close. Dropped a bit too close. He turned in, so I should have taken a bit, bit longer of a gap. He managed to turn into one of the torps, so they didn't have time to activate. The game ends overall. A pretty normal, I mean, T6 to 8, pretty normal if you're playing T7 carrier. 128k damage, I'll take it. I, I was mostly doing this just to get my British ship, and I figured I might as well make a comment around the Sidemen since I don't play it that much otherwise. But 46 planes shot down, I mean... The Saipan has most certainly benefited from 0.5.11. That's something I can most definitively conclude. I'm still running exactly the same spec on the Saipan as I did in the past in my previous commentary, in case anyone is wondering what kind of captain setup and such I'm running. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later.